It's the dawn of a new day in South Africa, and the Letaba Valley in the northern province of Limpopo shimmers in the morning light. The region is blessed with plenty of sunshine and rain, which explains the lush forests, tea plants, and fruits, such as apples, clementines, oranges, considered the best in the country. It's this fertile landscape that prompted the Letaba Company to set up operations here 50 years ago. It harvests and processes citrus fruits without polluting the environment as far as possible. The story begins here on the fruit plantations. The orange harvest is in full swing right now. The workers have their hands full. I enjoy picking. I enjoy it very well. I don't have a problem and I know the people, most of the people whom I'm working with, they enjoy the job very well. So that's why I enjoy it. I don't care about the office job. This is my job. This is what I want. Ivan Mashwana and his co-workers work hard. 85,000 tons of fruit end up in Letaba's factory each year. Here they're sorted and prepared for export or washed in long tubs and squeezed into juice. Letaba is one of the largest citrus fruits exporters and processors in southern Africa. The production process is sophisticated, but it's also highly energy intensive. Previously, the company consumed 8,000 tons of polluting hard coal each year to power its operations. Now the firm's management has opted for a greener alternative, sawdust. Since 2011, the company has gradually been replacing coal with sawdust. This biomass fuel already fires the large ovens used to dry the fruit peels. Letaba's CEO is visibly proud of the switch to greener energy. From the hopper, it comes through in a screw. Um, from the screw, it goes down into the oven that's here below us. And from the oven, it goes into the dryer. The carbon e emissions does not exist with the, with the burning of the sawdust or the, or the wood chips as it does with the, with the coal that we've traditionally burned. Sawdust is considered a valuable carbon-neutral biomass. The way it works is easy. It's 800 degrees Celsius inside the oven. The sawdust burns like kindling. The tons of wet fruit peels discarded during production are sliced and put in a drying drum. The hot air from the oven sucks out the moisture from the peels. What's left is high-quality animal feed. It's a perfect form of recycling. The fruit remains are simply absorbed back into nature. And that's where the sawdust comes from too. Just 20 kilometers away from the factory, huge forests on the slopes are home to pine and eucalyptus, two fast-growing tree species. It's no wonder then that forestry is booming in the region. Here in the mountains, trees are constantly being felled up to 300 a day at this spot alone. Below in the lumber mills on the main road, the trees are used to make pallets for industrial use. Each cut generates wood shavings. What begins as a small pile soon turns into a gigantic organic waste mountain. The lumber mills are more than happy to turn their waste over to the Letaba company. I mean, if they can use this stuff to their advantage, it's, it's much better than for me just to leave the stuff lying around here. So no, it's 100% if they can help me to clean my place a bit. If we can help the environment in any way that we can, then it's 100%. So it's a win-win situation, both for the citrus maker and the lumber mills. And even transporting the sawdust brings tangible benefits to this man, truck driver Gold Bunyayi Koza. He began delivering the biomass from the lumber mills to Letaba a year ago, and now he has a steady job. I felt very lucky when I got the new job. In my old job, I sometimes had to drive loads as far away as Johannesburg. Now I can work here in the region close to my family. That's really nice. Kolpan Yaye Koza sometimes drives two or three sawdust truckloads to the factory each day. And that's expected to increase in future because Letaba wants to replace its coal-fired boilers for juice production with biomass-fired ones. 
The steam generated here and used in juice pasteurization would also be an organic byproduct. In the coming years, Metabo wants to save 100,000 tons of carbon emissions. To capture that amount, you'd have to plant 8 million trees. But not everyone has benefited from the Taba's green initiatives. Hundreds of workers, many of them seasonal hands, and their families live in housing provided by the company, rundown huts. Donald Mulaleki, for instance, lives with his wife in this cramped home. He's angry about the conditions. The house is not good. It doesn't have proper sanitation. We're really suffering. The company doesn't give back anything to us. They don't give us anything. We don't benefit at all. But the company at least seems to have accepted that it urgently needs to improve conditions for its workers. Form a, a trust and a portion of the carbon credit income will go into that trust. And our employees will directly uh, benefit it in terms of education and, and, and housing. Letaba seems to be trying to protect the climate as well as bring about social change. And if that brings benefits for the workers, then the company's green project would be a real success story. <laughs>